seatbelt, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I'm about to go on a camel crash course to walk in the footsteps of Australia's early desert explorers. Whoa, jeepers. <laughs> to discover how these plodding giants have become both a prize and a pest. <laughs> OK, all right, fair call. You did a good job. This is the harsh Australian outback. To survive out here, you need something with extraordinary capabilities. Something that can stand up to the extreme punishment of this brutal landscape and unforgiving climate. Something that can go where nothing else can. Of course, I'm talking about the mighty hire car. But even before modern vehicles, another form of transport proved crucial in opening up this country. The camel. I want to know what life was like on those pioneering camel trains. And the secrets to mastering these temperamental trekkers. I've made the journey to remote Beltana Station, where some of the first camels arrived in South Australia in the 1860s. Here, Karen Ellis is keeping the camelier dream alive, running overland treks through the desert. G'day, Karen. Oh, g'day, Luke. How are you? Good, good. I'm keen to find some camels. Are they around here somewhere? They are. They're north. I'd like you to give me a hand with finding them. OK, how do I do that? We're going to give you this handset yep. and I'm going to get you to climb up on the roof and spot for them. Wow. All right, let's go. This OK, way. let's go. Karen's camels are domesticated, but roam free when not in use. No camels as yet. They're going to be hard to spot, though, I'd imagine. Keep your eye out for a camel that's white. She tends to stand out more than the other. You copy that. Looking for a white camel. Oh! Karen, I think I see some camels straight ahead. Fantastic work. Uh, Luke to motorbikes, Luke to motorbikes. I've just spotted some camels. Doing really well, buddy. Thank you so much. Look at that! Camels! Oh, hello. So this is the life of the party oh. that's coming towards us now. Look at that! He's put his head in. This is Zaki. G'day, Zaki. Let him go. He's racing us. Get on in there. Good. This is nuts. We're actually camel herding right now. Got him. Finally, we can saddle up. Each saddle has to be tailor-made because every camel's hump is unique. You generally think that's water. People think that's water this bit, but it's not all water, is it? It's not. It? No, no, it's fat. But the water in the hump idea isn't as crazy as it sounds. When that fat is converted to energy, water becomes the byproduct. Land the shoulder pads at the front. It's one of many features that allow camels to travel over 100 desert kilometres without a drop to drink. In theory, these guys could go this entire trek without a single sip. Beautiful, Margaret. Our three-day journey will take us 50 kilometres deep into the parched outback. Saddled up. Yeah, good job, Luke. Today, I've been given the job of leading a string of four camels, headed up by the white female I spotted earlier. Mumpy. Come I'm on. told that Mumpy can get a little grumpy, but we seem to have a certain up. understanding. Good on you, Mumpy. This is real work I'm doing right here, guys, just like the Afghans would have done 100 years ago. Vital for carting freight. Between 1870 and 1900, at least 15,000 camels are estimated to have come to Australia. Their handlers were commonly known as Afghans, but many actually came from India and Pakistan. Karen was saying that sometimes through the night they would walk on these camel trains. They would literally go day and night because the camels were carrying so much weight they didn't want to stop. Crazy, in this kind of heat, and then it'd be freezing cold at night. Literally 20 minutes and I'm buggered. It's hard work. But the very first Australian camel wasn't quite so useful. Harry the Camel, also known as Harry the Horrible, arrived in 1840 from the Canary Islands and was used to explore this very area with his owner, John Horrocks. But Harry's bad temper ultimately brought both undone. One day, whilst Horrocks was reloading his shotgun, Harry lurched, catching the cock of the gun. 
Horrocks lost a finger and a row of teeth and later died of his injuries. But not before having Harry shot in retribution. Oh, mumpy, mumpy, mumpy. There's no doubt about it. These animals can be strong-willed. You want to eat that one, mate, do you? But on the whole, I'm pretty happy with how things are going with Mumpy. Good girl. Very good. OK, all right, fair call. You did a good job. But let's not rush things. Can I... Yep, OK, no, I agree. So, Karen, Aidan's loading this up right now with the leftovers of our lunch, but what did camels used to carry back in the day? All the supplies that you can think of that were required for a station to be established, for railway lines to be put down, anything and absolutely everything the Afghans packed on their camels. From building the Overland Telegraph and the Gan Railway Line to moving mail and wool, these camel trains were the original road trains. By the end of the day, I'm absolutely spent. Just... Oh, yep, OK. <laughs> it seems Mumpy's a bit over it too. But it feels good to be having a break. Are we mates? <laughs> Fair enough, yep, nuts. We'll just chill. Karen, what are the camels doing right now? They've had a big, big trek. What's this? This is them doing what they do best gorging on acacia. They love it. It's flowering acacia. It's a great reward at the end of the day. And they really love this one. They need to eat for six to eight hours a day uh -huh. to keep these magnificent humps. Next day, some bad news and some better news. Beautiful. Sadly, Mumpy and I have been split up, but I've been given a replacement that I'm allowed to ride. This is my camel. This is Bindu. She is uh, a top camel. She's actually an ex-racing camel and uh, also goes up to 60 k's an hour. That last stat's real. Let's have a good day, Bindu. Please don't hurt me, OK? I've got this. Here we go, Bindu. Whoa, jeepers. Good girl. Good girl. So right now I'm free reigning a camel. But back in early pioneer days, that would have been pretty unusual because this place was normally taken by paying freight. But eventually that paying freight dried up. The roads and the railways that the camels helped build made the camels themselves redundant. No longer needed, many camels were released into the wild, where they flourished into the hundreds of thousands. Recent culling removed about 160,000 of them but problems persist with damage to fences, fouling of waterholes and overgrazing of native vegetation. Karen, they're beautiful creatures, but they are feral to Australia and that's a problem, isn't it? Well, I believe it's an industry beckoning to happen. Right. There's about a, an estimation of half a million camels. So I can foresee in the future um, export of camels, which we've already done successfully. Mm -hmm. Camel daring's already starting to take off in Australia. And there are other products that camels can produce in other countries. They're producing wool, byproducts from their meat and milk and, mm. and fat in the hump. And obviously tourism like you're doing here, because a lot of these were feral camels till recently, weren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. They are highly intelligent animals that train up very quickly. As a finale to my camelier experience, I'm going to hush down Bindu. Let's see if I can do this. Hush down Bindu, hush down, hush down, whoa! Hush down, hush down, hush down, yeah! Hush down, good girl. There's no doubt about it, camels really are amazing creatures. Even though at times I had a bit of a tenuous relationship with both Mumpy and Bindu, I've got so much respect for these beautiful animals. They really are the ultimate desert survivor.